Drain the system if possible or close the service valves on both sides of the pump before disassembling the pump. Before starting work on the unit, make sure that the unit and the control panel are isolated from the power supply and cannot be energized. Adjusting the motor housing can be performed with either a long T-handle Allen wrench, sized 5mm to 8mm, or a second way using a short Allen wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, and a T30 Torx bit. Using the long T-handle Allen wrench, loosen the four hex head screws that hold the pump housing in place. Once all the screws have been loosened, support the motor housing as you remove the screws by hand. With all four screws removed, you may now rotate the position of the motor housing into an acceptable alternate position. Please refer to the IOM section 4.5. If the pump housing is removed, take the opportunity to inspect and, if necessary, clean or replace the O-ring. There will be an extra O-ring available with the pump. To replace the motor housing, be certain to first insert by hand the screw located just below the drive. Hold the housing in place while using the long T-handle Allen wrench to tighten the screw enough so that the housing stays in place during the rest of the reattaching process. Reattach the remaining screws, starting them first by hand, then fully tightening the screws in a crisscross pattern with the T-handle Allen wrench. If you do not have a long T-handle Allen wrench, you may use the alternative tool noted earlier. However, the process has a few more steps. Use the Phillips head screwdriver to remove the three or four screws that attach the terminal box cover. Use the T30 Torx bit to remove the two or three internal motor body screws. Carefully lift the drive off the motor by grasping the sides of the drive. Be careful not to lose the two or three plastic spacers. Use the short Allen wrench to remove the four hex head screws. Once removed, the pump housing may be rotated into an acceptable alternate position. As demonstrated previously, please refer to the IOM section 4.5. Once in position, reattach the pump housing using the Allen wrench to secure the four hex head screws. Once the motor housing is attached, replace the drive by carefully snapping it back down onto the electrical connector and grounding slot. You can use the grounding pin as a guide. Once the drive is in proper position, reattach first the internal screws and then the external drive lid cover Phillips head screws. Do not make any connection in the pump control box unless the power supply has been switched off for at least two minutes. To install any connections such as power or control signal, open the drive lid cover by removing the screws. Slide the power wires through the stainless steel half-inch NPT electrical fitting. Connect the wires as detailed in the IOM by inserting the small flathead screwdriver into the terminal slot and pushing down on the terminal slot by lifting the screwdriver. This action will open the terminal slot, allowing you to put the wire in.
Then, reattach the terminal box cover. At each power on of the pump unit, an automatic air venting procedure is executed. At the beginning of the procedure, the user interface displays a number and DEG for degassing. 4 DEG is displayed at the start of the air venting procedure. Then the numbers count down until the completion of the procedure. If the user desires, the degassing procedure can be skipped by holding the up and down arrows at the same time for about 2 seconds. The air venting procedure will then be cancelled and the pump will start up and will display the pump's parameters. The air venting procedure can be activated at any time while the pump is running. To activate the air venting procedure when the pump is running, the user holds down the same two buttons, up and down, for about two seconds. The pump will display 4 DEG to signify the start of the procedure. To permanently disable or enable the air venting procedure, the user will need to hold the up and down buttons for about 10 seconds. The pump will display DG0F for when the air venting procedure is permanently disabled and DG0N for when the air venting procedure is permanently enabled. To lock the keypad of the user interface, the user will need to hold both the up, arrow and parameter button for about 2 seconds. The pump will then display closed brackets to signify the keypad is locked. Once the closed brackets disappear, the last parameter will be automatically displayed and any button press will display the closed brackets to signify the keypad is locked. To unlock the keypad, press the same two buttons for two seconds and the pump will display open brackets to signify the keypad is now unlocked. Change the control mode at the pump by pressing the operating mode button. The operating modes are cyclically changed by the pressed button. Factory default mode is the most upper signal. The next cycle of control mode has the nighttime setback when the moon shape is light. To change the set point for a particular mode, press one of the arrow setting buttons. The display will start to blink, indicating that you can change it now. Change the value using the arrow buttons. Wait 3 seconds to store and activate the new set point, and when the display stops blinking, it goes back to the last set point parameter. Power, flow, head, and speed parameters cyclically change by pressing the parameter button. To change the unit of measurement, press the parameter button. When flow or head are displayed, press the button for more than one second at each of these parameters. The unit of measurement then automatically changes, for instance, flow will change from cubic meters per hour to gallons per minute, and head from meters to feet.